I don't have to tell you that the unemployment numbers in this country remain at historic levels, 9.1% in July. That huge headline number is so big, it obscures the even bigger story hiding beneath it. There are groups of our fellow citizens in this country so disproportionately affected by the economic downturn, they would love to see unemployment at only 9.1%. Take, for instance, the 15.9% unemployment rate for African Americans in this country. Teenagers, 16 to 19 years old, who are looking for jobs, face an even tougher time with a 25% unemployment rate. And then there are cities like Modesto, California, where the unemployment rate is a staggering 17.2%. When it comes to those who have fought in the ongoing wars over the past decade, an unemployment rate of 12.4% seems particularly unjust. Today, one of those veterans wrote a remarkable article for the New York Times at War blog about the unfortunate situation they face after coming home from the front lines. Joining me now, the author, Jonathan Rob, Rab, spokesman for Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans for America. Jonathan, thank you. Uh, the piece was really affecting. Tell me, thank you, Chris. You're redeploying, and and it was that redeployment, or the specter of it, that seems to have cost you your part-time teaching job. Uh, right. I, I want to be clear. Um, I was working as a long-term substitute uh, at a charter school in the city, and uh, originally I had taken on that long-term uh, subposition as kind of a way to interview for a full-time position the next year. Once I re-enlisted, um, getting back into the National Guard, I had to go away for training for three weeks. Um, towards the end of my training, I received a phone call from my principal telling me that I had been replaced. Um, while I was still welcome to come in and work, I no longer had my original position, and I had kind of been demoted, more or less. Why do you think uh, we are seeing an elevated unemployment rate for, for veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan? Um, I think it's a, a difficult, complex problem, but I mean, I think the biggest thing is that a lot of us um, who have served in the armed forces, especially overseas in a combat zone, come home and have a hard time communicating what we can do and what we can bring to an organization, whether it be a, a school or, or a business. And I don't think employers are always uh, necessarily receptive to the types of things that uh, we can bring to them, and they're not always sure um, how we can benefit them. What do you mean by that? Do you mean that, the, that there is there suspicion about uh, your sort of mental stability, or is it just a question of being able to sort of communicate how your experience in these, you know, what are to many people exotic locales uh, doing things that they're not familiar with translates to their, their organization? I think it's actually a, a mixture of both. Um, in the piece, I talk about a conversation I had with my father, who, you know, is a great man, very supportive of my service. Um, he hires a lot of people, and sometimes it's, uh, he hires veterans as well. And in the piece, I talk about how he expresses to me his difficulty uh, when he hires a veteran or someone who's in the reserves or National Guard, and he has to kind of give up something for them, whether it's time away for training or sometimes they're dealing with uh, personal issues. Um, even though someone like him who's patriotic and has a son in the military, um, he's got to think about it uh, because it's definitely going to be a little bit of a burden on the business. Um, so he's definitely got to, you know, approach these problems, um, you know, in a way, even though he's got a personal connection to it, sometimes he's, he's got to think twice. You, you write in the article, everybody wants to support the troops until they have to share in the hardship and sacrifice. Then all of a sudden that bumper sticker or that flag pin doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, one of the features of the wars that we've been fighting over the last 10 years is that a very small group of people relative the population at large has been doing essentially all of the fighting. We don't have a draft, obviously, and right. there's, um, it's an it's, it's a all-volunteer force, and we've had two, three, four deployments. How much is that gap, that fundamental civilian-military gap, the kind of root problem here? I mean, that's, that's really troublesome. Um, a lot of us in the military are more aware of it than our civilian counterparts. It's really difficult to come home and just have like a simple conversation with your family sometimes, let alone a, a complete stranger in a job interview, and try to explain to them what exactly you've been training or what you've actually been doing. Um, you know, our experiences are very diverse and very different, and sometimes the only thing people see are like movies like The uh, Hurt Locker, and they think that's what, that's what the war is. In reality, we're very complex, uh, nuanced individuals. We have a lot to offer. We have very, very, very many diverse experiences, and unfortunately, people tend to look at us like a monolithic structure that they don't really want to approach because they're afraid of either offending, of, uh, offending us or they're actually afraid of us uh, ourselves. Finally, I, I was surprised, or well not surprised, but there's the, the point in the article in which you, you are writing and then you say you are redeploying to Afghanistan. Um, why, that's right. did, why did you, and that's your choice, my understanding is, why did you choose to redeploy? Oh, uh, that's a complex question. Um, I usually just tell people it's because girls like the uniform. <laughs> um, <laughs> But in all seriousness, uh, it's kind of hard to explain unless you've actually worn the uniform, unless you've actually served in the military. Um, 
films try to capture it. They try to say it's about camaraderie and brotherhood, but that kind of falls short sometimes. And I'll kind of like leave it at that if that's okay. Absolutely. Jonathan Robb, spokesman for Iraq, Afghanistan Veterans of America, and really an exceptional writer. Uh, you could read. What is the name of your blog, Jonathan? Uh, with a Bible in my ruck dot blogspot dot com. With a Bible in my ruck dot blogspot dot com. I highly recommend it. Thanks for joining yep. me tonight. Appreciate it.